Greetings! Welcome to Terra Prime Live! Darth Anonymous coming to you from Terra Prime Headquarters. Uh, tonight we're on the show. We are going to be talking about gear and armor and protective Ooh. equipment and all that kind of fun stuff that we uh, use for sabering here. Um, with us on the program is one of our uh, learners in exile. Um, our apprentices, I should say. Um, we have many learners in exile. But, uh, uh, Eric, how you doing, Eric? He's got a mute on here there, but... Uh... <laughs> I am muted, and I am just fine. Thank you, Master. How are you today? Very good, very good. Okay. So, uh, maybe other people will be dropping by here. Uh, we uh, hope so. But uh, we'll... I guess we'll just get started with it. So, uh, what we're talking about tonight is gear, armor. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is something that... Uh, comes into a point of contention with a lot of people. Uh, we find that we're constantly, at least I'm constantly trying to convince people to to uh, kind of put gear on and, and, and wear gear. And uh, for uh, for the weapon comment, and then, you know, for my background, we, you know, which is more of a heavy type combat type of thing rather you know, but even in sport fencing, we're, I mean, we use a lot of fencing equipment, um, which you'll see. Um, but it's it's amazing sometimes how little how how little people use out there, um, and I'm I'm also surprised how many how many injuries are just kind of accepted um, out there because they're completely unnecessary a lot of times. Um, so we're going to go through the different types of gear. Um, we'll go through a couple of reasons why um, I think we need to wear gear and actually hopefully make a case for, for having you try it. Um, we'll talk about different, uh, you know, different types, uh, going everything, everything from stuff that is just sporting related or uh, purpose related um, to something that's more costumey and, and on all of that kind of thing. And um, hopefully we'll... Uh, We'll we'll get some questions um, out there from anybody watching, and uh, well, we will uh, kind of take them there. So, um, I guess the first thing I should start out doing is kind of talk to you about why we kind of do it here in, at TPLA um, with with a lot of gear on or with, with, with armor. And our minimum requirement for, for sparring and for, for free sparring is um, head and face protection and hand and wrist protection. And most of the time what we what we will use are uh, fencing helmets, um, that kind of thing. And um, we'll go into all, all the pros and cons of all of these different things. And uh, lacrosse or hockey gloves. Um, <clears throat> there are lots of different types of gear out there of different ratings and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, the reason we do it that way is because of two main reasons. Um, number one, safety. There's a lot of injuries that can be completely prevented um, simply by throwing on some nowadays very unrestricted gear. And um, and armor, and the so the safety aspect of it. We don't want people getting hurt when you don't really need to. It's not going to take away from your technique. Most of this stuff, and we'll we'll, we'll go into it. Doesn't really limit your mo your mobility pretty much at all um, nowadays. Um, <clears throat> depending on the stuff that you get, there's other stuff that will. Um, that will be more or less restrictive, and we'll we'll go into that. And that part that's part of how we choose these things. The other thing is is that we kind of like harken back to a to a time when you could really really do this. And when you're all armored up, as we say, it's very easy to just kind of unload and and to pr practice these techniques as they were intended to be practiced, um, full speed. Full power. The lightsabers make it very, very safe um, with minimal gear to um, to do this this type of stuff, which is not necessarily the case with, say, steel weapons. Um, 
<clears throat> so it does free you up a lot, um, and it allows you to really see how far you're going, um, how effective a technique really is. It's a good thing. We call it the Saber Lab, and that's our rule set, and we'll go on how this all kind of ties in with, with a rule set as well. Um, <clears throat> so those are the main reasons that uh, that I would recommend um, wearing <clears throat> any type of a, um, uh, protective equipment. Okay. Um, so we can go through a couple of uh, couple of different things. Um, like I said, our minimum is hand and and head and face protection, and those are going to be the really the, the most important and probably the first ones that you're going to get um, other than uh, groin protection, which uh, can be bought pretty much anywhere. Um, so get that get that cup or groin protection um, out there. We'll spare you the, the, the illustrative details. But so anyway, um, like I said, we use uh, fencing helmets. Now this is a basic uh, three-weapon mask from Absolute Fencing, um, a very affordable supplier. There's also Blue Gauntlet. There's there's other places that you can get this stuff. Um, and you can actually find them on Amazon. So And they're actually very, uh, very affordable. Um, they can be had for anywhere between $40 and $60. Um, and the nice thing about them are, is, or... And the nice things about them are, um, first of all, the protection. It's basically like putting your head in a steel cage. So with, especially with our with our things here, total protection right there. Now you can get them of various strengths, various uh, qualities, and, and all of that kind of thing. This is the very the, very, the least expensive, and it is perfectly adequate for what we do. Um, you can also get, and you'll see sometimes I will be wearing um, the, the HEMA helmet, which has this extra padding here on the back, which is good, and, and I do like it. Now, you can also buy these hoods separately. So um, you can get one of these hoods and put it, if you have one of one of these, and I do have a hood right here. So a hood, just like this, you take this here, and essentially just pull it over like a regular hood. So you get there. Now the the obviously the back protection is is one of those added bonuses, but there's also something called a coaching helmet which uh, also has a black kind of hood on it or, or, or padding. And the nice thing about those hoods is that they they tend to take the wear and tear off of our polycarbonate blades. Um, uh, when using a bear a bear mask like this, the, the rubber and sometimes the uh, the paint off of the mesh will mark up the the blade. And uh, putting that hood on there <clears throat> or having some sort of hood on there, um, very uh, uh, very good to kind of protect our blades that way. Um, so that's kind of what we use here. Now you can also use hockey helmets. Now I had a hockey helmet kind of laying around. I could not find it, unfortunately. The thing I wanted to talk about hockey helmets or lacrosse helmets or any type of sporting helmet or whatever, that if it has face protection, you want to make sure that that mesh in front of the face will not allow a blade to go through it because you certainly don't want it to go through and get kind of stuck in there with your face. All right. Um, so that's very important um, right there. Uh, if you're wearing a helmet without face protection, you want to really, really make sure that you either get one with face protection or find something to at least protect your eyes. Um, so whereas um, 
I think there's some Taekwondo type sparring helmets that will have uh, like a visor. Um, those are okay. Um, you want to be careful with the things that are plastic because sometimes those can break, crack, and you know cause sharp, sharp things to be you know okay. present where you <laughs> right right by your face. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of the basics of head. Um, of head, head and face protection because that's really what we're looking to looking to do. We're looking to protect the face, especially the eyes, right? But all of this is very fragile, right? We're also looking to protect the head. Um, to a lesser extent, we're looking to protect the, to protect the neck and shoulders. This is where um, these fencing helmets, I think, really excels because when you get the when you get your head in there, um, you have Full, full, full peripheral vision. So I can see my hand normally because this mesh goes way beyond, or this this is way beyond my my peripheral vision uh, point. So it doesn't really uh, affect my vision that much. Um, you do get a weird kind of effect from the screen at first, but it's pretty easy to get over that after a while. Um, so that's why we use those. The um, these hoods, obviously, they have a little bit of neck protection, and obviously in the back. So those are those are excellent um, that way. Kendo um, uh, armor, also very good, although very expensive. That's one of the going to be the limitations of something like this. As you go up in quality, it will tend to get a little bit more expensive. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> those are the basics of uh, head face protection. Did you want to add anything here? Uh, Eric? Uh, sure, Master. I, uh, I have a hockey uh, here. I have a hockey helmet here, and um, here's one with a grill. Uh, the one problem, just like you mentioned, uh, these things are great for impacts, but the blade goes right through the hole and becomes a face wrecker. And it's not really the initial in that you guys taught me about. It was trying to, oh, no, oh, and then trying to get the blade out, which wrecks a face, and then not good. So it's you know, nice for a shot to the head, but it's, if you get stabbed by accident, I mean, that's, that's done. You're, you're, that's asking for a dicey trip to the hospital. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I, uh, I got my, uh, my fencing mask as well. Um, uh, I got mine from Zen Warrior Armory. Uh, it was really, really good. This is just Zen Warrior's 350 Newton force mask, and... Just like you said, you can see out the sides uh, peripherally. Uh, it's it's a little heavy at first, but you get really used to it. It's no different, really, than wearing sunglasses uh, when you're wearing it. And you, you get used to those too, and same with the the, the black uh, the grill um, or the mesh. And yeah, it's, it's very comfortable, and you can take a baseball bat to the head with this thing, and it doesn't really hurt that much. It's it's quite eye opening. And um, if if I may uh, indulge. Um, Indulge the audience here. One of the reasons why we wear these things. <laughs> so here's a bamboo pole. Here's a heavy grade blade uh, for multi shavers. Um, if you got, you got one of those at the head, that would really, really uh, end your fun right away. Uh, that's on a really, really heavy base, by the way, a metal base, and yeah, I took that thing down effortly with this thing. The blade didn't even flex. Even an accidental hit to the head, an accidental hit to the fingers, oh man, you're talking bruises galore. Um, yeah, we, we like this gear because we get to live the fight another day and we don't have to hold back. And that's what I, uh, that's what kind of kind of got me into the apprentice program, actually, was uh, the taste of battle with uh, you yourself, Master Anonymous, and uh, <laughs> I didn't hit you once, man, but oh, did I ever want to do it again later. Yeah. <laughs> Only reason why is because I, I, I left that experience with zero pain, no bruises, no injury, just having spent a lot of physical exertion fighting, which takes so much out of you it's not funny, and yeah, it's, it's like playing hockey without wearing equipment. Why in the heck would you do that? There is no bravado there. There is, that's just stupidity. 
And a lot of people don't realize that these things are not toys. If they're not used that way, these can really hurt somebody. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy to, uh, to be a part of this show because uh, of my experiences with you guys. And, yeah, we uh, might... The Sabre community, if they do wish to duel, I fully stand behind wearing gear. You get to do it again and again and again, and you don't have to go to the hospital. You don't have to go to the dentist. That's true, too. You know, people, you know, have sometimes expensive dental work that they have to get. So uh, we want to be, we, we definitely want to be uh, careful with that. Um, okay, so now t to the next to the next bit, um, <clears throat> hands, uh, protecting the hands. Probably the most... Um, common strike we have is a hit to the hands. We, 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 we get our fingers snapped all the time, um, knuckles wrapped. It, it, ha it, just, it just happens. Now, one of the reasons is because most lightsabers do not have a guard, and even if they did, we don't really know what that would. But so even if they have a guard, it's a very small guard. It's, it's not going to protect the hand, and that's... As somebody who's coming from, you know, fighting with steel weapons and fighting with, uh, you know, other types of poly weapons and wood weapons and all that kind of thing, um, it's it's definitely a challenge because you don't you don't have that protection be for your hands, so that becomes, you know, a much a much more uh, uh, enticing target. Um, now, just like with with the head protection, there's different levels of it. Um, where you can go for everything from a bike helmet to, and a pair of shop goggles all the way up to full-on, you know, kendo armor and all that kind of thing. But um, with the hand stuff, it's, you know, sometimes it, it, it can get... It can get ish interesting because um, pain levels will, will kind of different. But uh, there are definitely different levels of this, and they will kind of go up. And usually, what will happen is the more protection you get, the less mo you know, the less motion you get. However, it's kind of taken a turn recently with uh, new technologies and everything. They don't provide almost any protection whatsoever. Um, they're very, very thin leather, very soft, and they provide a lot of nice, uh, um, <clears throat> a lot of good, uh, good grip. But they're not exactly great for the uh, uh, for, for the protective part of it. Now, um, you can get other other types which may have a bigger cuff on them, and this one does have a big cuff, and it's a little bit more uh, sturdy, so it will protect a little bit. It's not going to protect a whole lot from impacts, right? Especially not here at the wrist. And we're going to talk about exactly where on the body we want to focus our attentions here in, in a minute after we get through these here. So these are of you know limited use, winter gloves, all this stuff. These are not really rated for impacts or, or, or padding or, or anything like that. Now um, there are of course like kendo gloves which are kind of like mittens and they're often very good for uh, two-handed stuff, two-handed work and all that kind of thing. Um, not really great for the one-handed stuff. Um, they're very, very similar to these, which are HEMA gloves. Um, these were, I believe, designed by a uh, Polish swordsman. Uh, and uh, these are actually kind of sold. These are like the cheapo versions of, of, of that, which are custom-made. You can get them from Jan Pohevich, but... Uh, these are kind of like kendo gloves and kind of like uh, hockey or lacrosse gloves, kind of mixed in between. But what they have here is they have this kind of split right there, and that's supposed to give you a little bit more thing. For what we do, I have found these not to be very good at all. Um, they provide a lot of protection here at the cuff, um, which is nice. Uh they provide some protection up here, but they even they don't really pr they, they don't really protect 
as well as I would have thought either. So these are the ones for my absolute. So if, I mean, if you're looking for for gloves, I would probably not push you in this direction. These are a little bit more expensive, and they're very uncomfortable, very stiff, you know. So <clears throat> so there's that. Um, what else we got? Oh right, the other type that is often used. Let's see if I can get a pair here. Okay. Or something like this, like a uh, MMA glove. <clears throat> and uh, these provide protection for the knuckles. Yes. All right. They also allow you very good mobility, very good grip. Um, right here, but they provide zero protection for your fingers and thumb, which are the really the, the parts that you're really looking to protect. Um, because those are going to be not necessarily the biggest oops, the biggest injuries, but some of the most painful and definitely the most common. So not, again, uh, good for certain things, not really great for savoring. Um, would, would probably shy you away from that. Now, um, you can also get something called street hockey gloves, which are kind of like... A, uh, you know, hockey gloves light, and um, <clears throat> here's an example of one. And they look just like a hockey glove. They're usually in smaller sizes for kids, right? But they provide a lot of great mobility, perfect for holding on to a saber, even something that has you know kind of a curve to it like this. Um, <clears throat> Right, you still have good feeling in in the palm and in the finger, so I can use all my my uh, auxiliary buttons and all of that kind of thing. Obviously, full range of motion here. So that's that's the. Uh, the uh, street hockey glove, and these can be got, gotten for you know, 20, 30 bucks over at your local sporting goods store, uh, pretty much anywhere. And again, most of this stuff is available on Amazon as well. So, um, and it, a nice little feature of these, the Franklin ones, um, is that they have this curved finger. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, and yeah, it doesn't allow me to you know, do a really effective point or a come hither. But uh, when I'm gripping here, the uh, the pad does not shorten, exposing the very tips of my fingers, which can be very annoying, especially getting tagged right there over and over and over again. So um, little little thing there. The gloves I actually do prefer are... Uh, Usually lacrosse gloves, and I and lacrosse gloves are nice because the the sport of lacrosse requires kind of the same type of motions with the hands. Um, it's there to protect against impact against a stick, very similar to the type of impact that we would incur in sabering. Um, they're jointed all the way through, <clears throat> so you can see that there. They're actually very slim considering how much protection they they do provide and they provide enough protection I can take and obviously it's not the same when I'm doing it myself I can take full force hits with heavy grade blades to the hand with zero problem um, <clears throat> now some, sometimes if somebody if somebody gets a really good shot in Obviously, you know, I'm still going to feel it, right? But these will even stand up uh, with uh, the steel long swords, the fetter sword. <clears throat> so uh, I do recommend these. Uh, this, this particular model and sticks in general, I, I, I believe, puts a larger cuff on, on there so you get much more wrist protection here. My, my wrist is up here, and uh, 
we'll go into that as we start going into the different other types of armor and, and where we go <clears throat> um, from there here. So, um, okay, so that's that's the basics on the hands. Uh, do you have anything for us, uh, Eric? Yes, sir. Um, I have a, a set of Nike hockey gloves here. Um, I find that in terms of just absolute protection, uh, everything is covered. The range of motion on these things, I mean, sure. Um, we, can, we can do it, but they feel very, very bulky. Uh, but on the other hand, nothing. Nothing. Like, it's, they're meant to take slap shots. These are defense gloves. The, the flexibility is almost nil on the thumb. It's actually hard plastic. Um, that said, um, I, would, I wouldn't be afraid of going up against somebody with a bogan wearing these things. Um, nothing is, is going to happen wearing these gloves to your hands or wrists. Um, but I, I am kind of concerned about just above that. Uh, I like to wear elbow pads as well. Um, there's always a small little gap. Maybe we can talk about that later. But um, there's always yeah, a small gap. Like something like that. So the um, yeah, getting getting hit right here would, would really suck. But anywhere else, um, yeah. For, for in terms of raw armor, I love these things. But I wish the thumb bent a little bit more. Which they don't. Yes. Yep. There's a little bit of mobility issue there. Um, okay. So, as we move on to the, some of the other the, the other pieces, uh, aha, you got somebody joining us here. How you doing, Jeff? I'm good. I'm sorry I'm late. I thought it started at 7. I apologize. Yes. Well, okay. So, um, yes, we're, we're getting into something here. Actually, um, we were just talking about kind of gloves and hands, and he was demonstrating some of the, the hockey gloves. Um, why don't you show the kendo gloves? Yeah, we got kind of showing there. These are kind of these are like the uh, the standard kendo gloves. It's kote is what they're called, and uh, they're very similar to um, to the the Hema gloves. They uh, they are not bifurcated though. They have one kind of mitten. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but uh, let's see here. So they're they're really just one big mitten. So they don't offer a whole lot of dexterity. Uh, they offer a lot of protection, but you're kind of stuck in holding the sword in one way. <laughs> That's it. Um, we've tried kind of doing the makashi, kind of fencing with them. The problem is when you when you hold a, a weapon in that in that same way that you would when you fence, you expose the entire part of the glove that's not giving you any protection at all. So they're good for the shicho standard grip or something along these lines with two hands, uh, the German longsword type stuff, they're not going to be good for a lot of the one-handed, very dexterous things that you need to do for Makashi, things like that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, and that's, that's a pretty, both the hockey gloves and the, and the kennel gloves show that, that same kind of thing, is that the more protection you, you put on there, generally the less mobility you have, and you're always trying to find that that, that good balance. Uh, we had a question on the internet um, about paintball gloves, and um, and uh, I, w I would even extend that into motocross gloves and stuff like that because those generally have um, the, the the padding on the knuckles. They're okay. I would say they're better than nothing. Um, they would I would fall between a very thick padded leather glove and maybe a street hockey glove somewhere in there because they usually have an armor piece across the knuckles and maybe a couple around there. But the, the, the bones, most of the bones of the metacarpals up here are kind of exposed and, and there's zero protection on the wrist. Um, but we're going to talk about that here in a second um, because as we start going through where we want to put on armor in our body, uh, especially when we're talking about with with uh, sabering, which is you know a pretty innocuous thing. I mean, we can it's round, it's pretty flexible. Even the heavy grade blades aren't going to do a gigantic amount of damage, um, but they will do damage. Um, and if one breaks and uh, or well, the hilt, the hilts are made of aluminum, so <clears throat> you can you can constantly get that. 
the first priority we kind of want to look at is joints, okay? Because those are going to be very, very uh, uh, vulnerable. Um, and if we're going to kind of prioritize things kind of as we go, go through here, the next thing we're going to talk about is here the shoulder girdle because we have our collarbone here. We have these joints right here, these here. All this stuff is very, very fragile. It's also very exposed, and it's very common to get hit there. Um, <clears throat> now, um, it's good that uh, we got Jeff here because uh, the um, the fencing mask, uh, whoops, the HEMA mask here has some neck protection, right? Doesn't have a whole lot of shoulder protection. So usually, what you get is you get something like this, right? Which will go around here, and it protects the collarbone and the top of the shoulder, right? <clears throat> Obviously, putting more pieces on, <laughs> little less, you know, little less uh, desirable. But you still have a little bit of motion. Now I know in the the, the kendo helmets. Um, do have shoulder protection as well. Yeah, this is this is the standard men, and um, I, it's got a lot of throat protection. That's the only place you're technically supposed to thrust in kendo. We don't follow that rule in my dojo, so um, we, you know we thrust wherever we can. But uh, there's a lot of protection in the throat right here, um, and then this this is a very very heavy heavy fabric. It's not. Uh, it's kind of like what what it looks like on the Hema helmet. I couldn't really tell, but it's just a very thick fabric. Um, yeah, it's very similar to that, and and, and as uh, as it sits, you see, you actually get this um, this protection above the shoulders. Now, there's not a lot underneath that. If somebody can slip up, you know, slip underneath and get in underneath the helmet, it's not going to help you a whole lot. But again, the kendo gear is made to face off against somebody two-handed. So if I'm standing in that stance, it, it provides perfect protection. If I if I try and square off sideways with somebody, not only do I have a hard time adjusting my helmet, but you can see what this does to the shoulder protection. It totally throws it off, and now I no longer have any shoulder protection. So that's that's kind of the only the only problem we've had with the kendo gear so far is it's made to kind of turtle up in one position. And if you're in that position, you're set. But anything else, you you risk uh, exposing yourself in certain ways. Yes, yeah, um, and that's yeah. That is again one of those trade-offs. The more if if things are one piece, they become you know definitely more protective, but then a little less um, uh, mobile. Um, well, well, thing, oh, sorry. No, I was, was going to say the kendo gear is really good protection if you're going to go two-handed, face off directly against somebody. But I think I mentioned to you in an email, it's for what you're paying for it. You're not really getting as much protection as you could from, say, piecing together with lacrosse gloves and some lacrosse gear like that, and, and then maybe buying a human helmet or a fencing helmet along with that. Right, yeah. And the other thing, too, we were talking about the shoulders. We were talking about the shoulders. Um, going in it, um, I know Nike, Under Armour, this is, this is an Under Armour one, has these uh, things, and they're usually for football, which are designed to not only provide some protection in themselves with these hmm. guys here, but they sit right, they're right there where generally shoulder armor will sit. So it, it, it will add a little bit of extra protection, especially to the very sensitive areas. Now, I mention that because we're going in here. I'm going to show you this here. This is LARPing armor, live action role play, right? It is made out of rigid leather. Um, it's really simple. You just put it on here. It gives you pretty good mobility, right? Very, very good there. It has. It's it's hard. So, you know, you there's it pokes and prods you. If you put one of these shirts on underneath it, it feels really really good. Now, the nice thing about the slar larping armor is it does. It is supposed to protect you in some way. I would never go up against, like, it would not be SCA rated, I would imagine. <laughs> um, but um, it can take hits, right? Um, so this, some of this stuff can be, and you have to just check in with the with, with the manufacturer or the uh, 
or, or the vendor whether or not it's it, it's rated for that. But I know a lot of LARPing uh, societies do do some of the combat. Now the nice thing about this kind of stuff is it's very period, so it's 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 interesting to to wear. And as we start getting in more into this hobby, obviously a lot of us are working on Star Wars armor, right? Which will be rated for competition. So we're all waiting for all of that. But this is a nice little thing if you're interested in even piecing stuff together yourself, getting some of this. This is this was not that expensive. Um, obviously, it's a lot of leather, so it's going to cost that much. But um, it's very easy to take on and off. It's got very simple construction, right? So repairs would be easy, all of that. And like I said, it provides some protection. Now, this is the lacrosse armor, and I know Eric's wearing some of that, so we can show that here. Um, but it's essentially the same type of stuff. It's just got foam and plastic in, in, in place of leather. It's a little more comfortable, um, provides um, quite a bit more protection, and um, it's much more much warmer. <laughs> so uh, one of the things about uh, especially doing, um, uh, doing stuff in armor, and for all you workout nuts here, here's a good, here's a good little, uh, little workout tip. Uh, try doing your workout in gear, and um, that's uh, I've trained fire firefighters that way, um, and it, it will kind of train your body to deal with the uh, the rigors of wearing something like this because it's a little added weight. It's definitely a little added uh, movement going on here. Most of this stuff won't really limit your mobility. Um, I can't strap it all on here, but I can show you. It goes on very, very simply. And I have, I can get up into high guards, move here, and these, of course, strap there. So I have protection pretty much of my entire shoulder girdle. Now, the one thing that this does not have is this has a gaping hole right here at the throat, right? Which we want to figure out something to protect. Now, some of the masks do come down below that, like that. But lacrosse, being the sport that it is, actually has its own little uh, throat guard. So you can buy those. They're just a little piece of plastic. Um, and uh, <laughs> you can get them for like six bucks. So, <clears throat> but you definitely want to worry about the throat in, in that area as well. Now, motocross armor as well uh, tends to be very, very good um, because it's it's protecting these these areas that we really want. The shoulders, motocross armor actually goes down to the elbows and all of that. Um, so, <clears throat> so there's that. Now. If you go down to the elbow, these are lacrosse slash guards, but uh, uh, any any thick impact resistant um, elbow pad will do, definitely. Um, most elbow pads now are made of stuff that is is more than enough for what we do, um, and in that way. Going down to the armor. Uh, to the arm, <laughs> the arm armor. Um, these are bracers. These are the LARPing bracers. These actually <clears throat> have a fair amount of protection. Um, these particular ones have a uh, kind of quilted inside. But with these, with, with, with the polycarbonate bla blades, when we're not talking about the joint, what we're really talking about is we're talking about getting whipped with, with a stick. It's going to leave a bruise. It's going to leave a lot of soft tissue, this, that, and the other. Our, our joints are really our priority, but um, obviously getting hit in here, you'll get welts all over your arms, all that kind of thing. 
lot of people like to tough that out, use them as a badge of honor. Eh, that's up to you. But um, for for that kind of thing, even just a thick thick piece of armor or uh, leather, something like that. But uh, there are forearm protectors for martial arts out there, um, which are perfect for this kind of stuff. Um, there are, uh, I know Proforce, I, I was just trying out a pair of uh, Proforce uh, leggings um, like that the other day, and they were, they were great. Um, there's, there's some basic forearm protection that we use at the, at the dojo. There you go. Real simple. It's only padded on one side, but the side that's padded, you can kind of rotate it wherever you're getting beat, and you kind of move that pad. Um, when Jeremy and I were sparring, he, he was he was more of a fencer, so he kept getting whacked on the top side of his arm. So he just wore these and rotated them around to where he was getting whacked. And uh, and when I get hit by him, I get hit on the outside of the arm because of the, the kendo. So I would you know I would rotate them around to the outside. But these were these are like four dollars a pair. <clears throat> yeah, like a lot of this stuff nowadays, especially if you go to like a used uh, sporting goods store, um, I mean, you can find this stuff for next to nothing. You can walk in with 50 bucks and walk out with an entire set um, <clears throat> for that. Um, now, I the body armor aspect, there's there's different ways that you can, you can do body armor. Um, uh, taekwondo or regular karate tournament type type uh, chest guards are fine they don't they don't have pretty much any protection up here in the shoulder so you have to do that if you go back and watch our other show on Saber Lab I'm wearing one of those with the lacrosse pads on top um, like that uh, Kendo I know has yeah has, I, has a body so I left the, it's called the dough, and I actually left it at the dojo. I didn't even think about it because we never used it. Jeremy and I never found yeah. it because, it, again, it only covers from the sides of your ribs forward. So if you turn sideways, it stopped right, right under your armpit, and it didn't give you any protection from a back strike or anything like that. So we just found it useless for how limiting it made you. Um, they also have like a, a kind of, we call it kind of the battle skirt. It's called a tare, and it um, it would just go right under the dough, and it came down to about your knee length, and it was basically so you didn't have to wear a, an athletic protector. Um, it, it protected your crotch and your thighs from any kind of strikes. There's typically no strikes in kendo that go to the legs, but again, our, our dojo does pre-war kendo, so we, we strike where there's openings. Um, so we would still use those pretty heavily as opposed to other places, but... Uh, but yeah, I didn't bring those because they were so useless with regards to what we were doing. They only provide protection in the front. They don't do anything in the sides or the back. Yeah. So. Yeah. We um, use, uh, again, lacrosse rib protectors, which will ha they do have a gap, but once you get them on, they, they do a pretty good job of protecting it. I can't, can't see here. They do a pretty good job of protecting <clears throat> these two sides here. Obviously, this still a little bit, little bit exposed there, but um, generally speaking, we're not, we, we try not to to lunge too too much at the bladder. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the, and again, these are these are very inexpensive. All of that. Now I know, Eric. What do you have on right now? All right, uh, here, I'll, I'll put this on, and I'm fully suited up here. All right. So, uh, my gear consists of, uh, we've already gone over the hockey gloves. Uh, I also have, uh, just like you said, I have, um, they're not actually the cross, but they're uh, forward, uh, forward hockey equipment. So a center or a left or right wing. Um, what this does is, uh, just like you mentioned, it, um, <laughs> I'm still getting used to that. Um, it, it still allows all sorts of range. Um, so um, I, I wouldn't mind a little bit less there. I also have um, hockey elbow pads. I mean, uh, 
pads. <laughs> They're awesome. And these uh, shoulder pads, everything down right to there. That, that hurt a little bit. And right between the glove and the cuff, or the, the right there in the cuff. Those are my weak spots. Uh, other than that, anything on the upper body right now, including the front, anything, it's really protected. So uh, I, the, uh, yeah, just a simple pair of hockey gloves, which I'm going to probably change to road hockey gloves. I think I'm going to get lacrosse gloves, actually, now that they have a larger cuff. Uh, elbow pads, forwards, hockey pads, shoulder pads, and... Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a regular jock strap, which I'm not wearing right now because this is a family show. But um, yeah, this is uh, this is what I, I fought you with, and I wasn't afraid of getting hurt. I was just wondering how I was going to hit you. Right, <laughs> and that's the, that's one of the main, uh, of course, the main the main reasons. Um, now I do have. Um, not only the bracers they have them for HEMA, um, which are big slats in in, um, in very thick fabric, very much like the like the kendo um, shoulder bits, and um, that go over the forearm, and then greaves that go over the 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 uh, shins. I can't quite find them yet, but they're very very simple. You just wrap them around. You've got a piece of Velcro that you put around that, and they provide essentially full protection around your shin and all of that. Um, generally speaking, you then go up to your knee. You can get knee pads just like any impact resistant knee pad is going to be is going to be is going to be excellent and you can find them anywhere from skateboarding to biking to, to all of that kind of thing. You can get ones that are specifically for like EMA and stuff like that. Which may have a little more protection on the, uh, you know, on the round part. I've never noticed a whole lot of difference between them, so I would always go for the less expensive, expensive kind. Um, thigh armor, a little difficult. Uh, the skirt um, is a great, is, is a great solution. Um, and you can get these at, at different armorers and stuff like that. They sometimes are called tacit belts. Um, and uh, what will happen is, if you have, even if you strap on armor onto your thigh, it will tend to slide down. So you need to hook it to something on your on your belt. And a lot of times, they just even forego attaching it to the thigh, and they just have slats that come down around in a skirt. And you would be surprised how well that protects. Um, so. So those would be like if you were really getting getting full on armored up. Now I know there's that one, there's that armor going around which has the the sensors in it where it will tell lethal hits from regular hits and and all that kind of thing. And that all looks really really cool. It also looks really expensive. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm of two minds on that one. It's like uh, believe me, I would love to have a set, but I don't know if I can. Mortgage my house again for, <laughs> for that. Another but, uh, um, uh, you're talking about pants. Uh, hockey pants uh, for a forward rather than a defense. That uh, that's a really low cost solution at the, uh, the used goods store, and um, and they they allow all the range of motion you would want. I mean, you're supposed to skate like lightning with those things. Uh, they will take a slap shot if you get one. So uh, another great idea is with that in a cup. Your whole, basically from the waist down to your knees, is invincible with the saber. Awesome. That's good to know. Um, one thing I want to mention, we've got these masks in the back. Those, you may see them with, like, children and all that kind of thing, but uh, those are not protective equipment. <laughs> right. Um, just so you know. You can shatter those things. Those things can go in your eye. It's, it's really, really, really bad. Just don't don't use them. Shop glasses, fine. Those, no. Um, finishing up, I wanted to kind of reiterate why why you want to armor up. And we, we've kind of touched on it here, is that when you finally get into a combat situation, when you're sparring with somebody else, and you've got protection, you're, you're, you're good and protected, 
um, you you're freed up into kind of what you can try and what you you know what you what you will do. Um, you can try things that maybe will fail, and we always say invest in loss, right? So you have to try things that fail to know what's going to work and what's not. So if I'm sparring with somebody, I want to try something. Okay, boom. Did it work or did it not? Nope, I didn't. Work. Now some people say the pain teaches you where your weak points are. And well, believe me, the humiliation of getting hit on the head constantly if you're doing a technique wrong is more than enough motivation for most people. Right? If you need physical pain, maybe this isn't for you. <laughs> You know, maybe you're, maybe you have some some problems above and beyond this. Um, but you know, uh, one thing that pain will do is it will make you hand shy. It will make you timid. You know, it will you'll, you'll pull back. We are sparring with people who are our friends and who are our colleagues and our, our training partners and stuff like that. We it, deep down we don't want to hurt them, so we're not going to really unload on. You know, onto something. Certain exercises that we do, sometimes in more advanced levels, people take off the equipment because they're working on particular precision or particular techniques and stuff like that. That's not usually how you just go and free spar. If you look at some of the HEMA tournaments, if you look at, if you look at any full-on combat tournament, one of the defining things about it is the gear that they're that they're using from Eskrima. To uh, uh, Yogo do Pai, which is that uh, Portuguese stick fighting thing, they all they have really awesome armor. Um, you know, it's always we're always trying to look for for, for, for a way to protect um, protect ourselves in a way that we can then realistically kind of train this stuff. You know, full speed, full power. I want my opponent to be giving me everything because I want to know if this is really going to work. I know we don't have lightsabers, but hey, you know, it's it's part of the practice, right? Um, so anyway, any, any, any thoughts on that, gentlemen? No, sounds good. No, I, uh, I remember you mentioned it on one of the forums out there, uh, Master, but you mentioned that um, it's actually boring the whole time. And I, I fully agree when the potential of going going right ahead and going full force at somebody to actually fight them for real without really too much danger of hurting them. Well, that's I, I, I'll flat out admit it. That's really what hooked me on this uh, this saber combat stuff was the fact that uh, we you didn't have you no know, just go right ahead and try to obliterate your opponent. And if you do, right on, do it again. <laughs> you know, right. it was really really cool and. Um, it was against my, my nature at first to, to hit that hard. Uh, I mentioned before it took me a few tries to actually hit Bornock in the head until he said, good. Yeah, not used to, uh, had to turn off a few safety switches uh, in my brain to allow me to swing that hard at somebody. And once I did, it literally got ten times more fun than it was before because you, know, you can try and, and that's what it's all about, which is uh, really, really awesome. So. Uh, anybody who says oh, I don't need gear, you're not you're not getting the full package. Guaranteed, you're firing on three out of your four batteries, and it's going to stay that way until you gear up. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you're not going to hit as hard. You're not going to do that. People say, oh yeah, well it will slow you down and, and all of that. <laughs> okay, I think it wasn't that in Game of Thrones too. Didn't they make a make a joke about that? Like one of the Dothraki. Says to him, it's like, why do you wear all the, like that metal suit? Like, well, it makes me, you know, it protects me from getting killed. He goes, yes, but it makes you slow, <laughs> like, not slow enough to, you know, to make a difference. So, um, yeah, but that, I mean, that's the thing. And when you when you when you come from, you know, any type of, you know, thing like that, it's too bad. To, uh, um, Nero isn't on tonight to come from a competitive fencing aspect where, I mean, you look at that, anything that's happening at that level of competition, right, you have protection for the very purpose of you want your, you want the athletes, you want the people involved to go, to go full force, to, to not be able, 
or to, to not have to hold back to, to, to be able to bring their all to you know to the game you know and when you're dealing with weapons it becomes extremely dangerous you know because you know a weapon you know amplifies our you know our our effect that we have so so there's that all right well uh, final thoughts um, before we go here uh, well, I've, I've got a, I've got one of the HEMA helmets actually on order, so that's I've already been sold on those. <laughs> I'm, uh, they're basically a fencing mask with the kendo protection on the sides of throat. So I'm getting one of those. Um, I've uh, what we've tried to do at the dojo, I've tried to introduce more guys into the kendo aspect, but again, I think I mentioned this to you. Four hundred bucks is the is the lowest rate for standard kendo bogu. And that's a huge commitment to a new student who still wants to get in and be able to spar. So I'm I'm piecing together with my ghetto kendo armor so that you know I can get any new student in and give them a shot with it. And um, and this is what I'm using. I'm using the same stuff that we've kind of gone over. You know that you illustrated tonight, and that we've gone over here the lacrosse pads, things like that. And um, and I, I think it's phenomenal. I think everything you guys are doing is great, and that this stuff is is just astronomical at how many possibilities it has with regards to different styles coming together and sparring. It's just great. Oh, absolutely, yes. I mean, and especially with if you have two guys who are, you know, who have protection and when when you get into the rule set, and our rule set goes by, you know, that rule set is kind of defined by the amount of protection people are wearing. Wherever you're protected, those become valid targets. <laughs> That's anywhere, you know. So, you know, oh, shoulders... Here, here, okay, that's all valid targets. So all of a sudden, all of that, you know, becomes, uh, well, <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to think about it now. Um, and you can just think about it. You don't have to worry about breaking a rib, you know, which is always a bummer. But, um, all right, how about over to you, Eric? Uh, my recommendation is um, you don't really... If you're not made of money or anything, um, and you know one of your friends has, uh, you know, comes from a, a really has a bunch of brothers and sisters, and they come from a huge hockey family. Why not see if there's any old gear of theirs lying around, especially if they're current hockey players. Every hockey family I know has extra old gear just lying around that's just waiting to take polycarbonate, generally speaking, for free or for a really good friend deal, if you will. So. Um, there's nothing wrong with getting used equipment. Either way, whether you use it for hockey or whether you use it for sabering, you're going to have to let it air out in the basement after and spray the Febreze afterwards. But other than that, um, yeah, it's nasty. It's, it's I'm used to it though. We'll uh, do a, we'll do a whole show on on gear maintenance. <laughs> actually, one of the things I did, uh, I actually built a PVC kendo stand. Because the last thing you want to do after a good night of kendo is toss it in your bag and forget about it for a week. Oh, God. <laughs> that stuff is nasty, and it grows mildew. So, actually, I'll try and kind of point my computer here and see if I can do this. I don't know if you can see it in the corner. I get this PVC stand back here that I've actually made um, for the, the kendo stuff so that I can come home, throw it on there, and it can, you know, kind, of, it can kind of air out. Nice. Yeah, it'll it'll fit under the gloves. It's got some stuff to hold the gloves and the dough and things like that. But um, I think I spent like two hours and eight dollars worth of PVC. So I've, I've, my wife's an architect. She drew the plans up on um, on a CAD software for me, so I can share those with you guys too. If you want. Sweet, very good. Yeah. Um, the other thing I use, um, and you, just this as a, as a as a quick exit here, little tip. Um, Cause yeah, right. When you throw you throw your gear in the bag to to go home after after a night of spirited spirited swordplay, you know, it gets a little rank in there. One thing to stop that bag from smelling. Anytime you get anything that has those little silicone packages or those little silicone anything or whatever, don't throw them away. Right. Put them to the side and then throw them in your gym bags because what those are supposed to suck the moisture out of everything, right? So I'll throw a couple of those into my fencing helmet, or uh, you know, in, just into the bag, right? Or you know, into my sneakers or, or footwear, whatever, whatever it is, till I get it home. And you know, it does it, it does tend 
tend to help that. And then if you leave that stuff in the bag, you don't have the <laughs> the beast waiting for you in the next time you use it. You have a, a chronic problem with that, too. Uh, a lot of sporting goods stores uh, sell sports balls, which um, are basically that with a little bit of deodorant in it, nice not too offensive deodorant, and toss a couple of those in a hockey bag, and it's not really so bad. It is bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. Yeah, right, right. No, you're not going to get away from from it, but you will be able to lessen it. Um, all right. Well, we are at the end of the hour here. Um, great discussion here, guys. Uh, got uh, at least one question here from the, from the Internet. Um, so, obviously, lots of choices nowadays, um, lots of ways to get it. Um, it's, it's affordable. Um, go ahead and do it because and try it. And uh, or, or or find some place that, that that has something and and put that stuff on there and and see the difference. You know, oh look, I can actually hit you in the head. You know, I can actually feel what it is like to to rain something properly so that so that I know if I'm doing my technique right. Um, okay, so from everybody here at uh, Terra Prime. Uh, we will uh, wish you a, a good weekend here. Uh, may the force be with you, and happy sabering.